Uh, next up is the project Trustful or Trustworthy Full Stack Computing with Mats Dan. Uh, Mats is professor with the Division of Theoretical Computer Science at KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology, and um, he leads the, the SSF-funded project Trustful. Thank you very much. Yeah, so some words about the Trustful project. Uh, um, as you said, SSF-funded uh, project in the security, cybersecurity program. Trustworthy full stack computing. So yeah, I'm a professor in uh, in the TCS division, and actually uh, all of the partners in the uh, in the project are from this division. Pretty much anyhow. Uh, there's. Uh, I just want to explain who's involved. There's uh, Benoit and Martin, uh, our French professors in software engineering. So there are software engineering guys working quite high on the stack. Uh, there is my colleague Roberto and myself. We are working low in the stack uh, and interested in uh, yeah, modeling low-level features of all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes. There's Mozart, who's a programming languages guy programming languages, language-based security, if that term tells you anything. And there's Douglas, who's a cryptographer. Uh, so this is a mixed bag of people with a mixed bag of competences. And uh, that is not an accident, because what we were curious about when we started this project was to take a more systems-oriented view than we normally do when we do disciplinary research in cybersecurity, when we look at one specific problem, one specific part of the stack, and try to solve that completely. We would like to understand, well, if we take an entire complex system, you know, where, where can we contribute? What are the techniques we can use the various places? We are not kidding ourselves uh, to, uh, I mean, we're not trying to tell ourselves that we can solve end-to-end -end security because nah, that is too much, but we want to be heading in this project in this direction and see, you know, what are the security concerns when we look at a real complex system and what can we do about it, right? And this is our demonstrator now, which we are five years now into the, pretty much five years into the project. So this is the demonstrator we build up. And it's an e-voting uh, e voting system. You may like e-voting or not and think that's the way to go. It doesn't really matter. For our purposes, it's just a, a, a complex system. It's a distributed system that does all sorts of stuff. M much of it is crypto, crypto. Much of it is of a standard distributed system nature, right? And uh, so that's our demonstrator here. And that demonstrator is built upon earlier work, SSF funded by Douglas, uh, who was our cryptographer who build up a, a mixed net solution, which is really a reference, I would say, a reference implementation of an e-voting backend. Okay. What a mixed net does is basically shuffle votes. Okay, so it receives votes here and it shuffles them and hopefully out comes a tally which is a shuffled set of votes. They're shuffled so you can't bind a vote that you see in the tally to a vote sent by some vote collection server. Okay. Uh, this part is still being developed as part of the project, but it originates from an earlier uh, SSF-funded project. And this has been used uh, in, in hard elections many different places in Norway and Estonia. In, in fact, it's going to be used in uh, national elections in Estonia and in Norway. And it's a strong inspiration for e-voting experiments that on a national basis in Spain. So this is a high quality reference uh, subsystem 
of our demonstrator. I just want to point that out. That doesn't mean that there are no security concerns in there. Of course, there are, as we saw in the last session, there is ample opportunity, of course, to, uh, to, to introduce side channels and things like that. And that's part of the stuff that we are interested in looking at. So what else is going on in a system like this? Well, there's a voting, there's a voter. They, of course, need to talk to, to, a, uh, talk to the system and submit some votes. And how does it do that? Well, it needs to. It needs some user interface, which is get, it gets some, some sort of content delivery service. And that had better be right and secure, otherwise we're in big trouble. So part of this story, we have some relation to build systems and things like that, you know, to make sure that all this works correctly. Of course, it's also the case that a, that a voter needs to authenticate herself, otherwise, obviously, we're in big trouble. And eventually, a voter will submit a vote. At this point, it is, well, certainly in our system, trivial to bind the voter to, to her vote, which is something we don't want to happen. So here's the real security critical part of this. Well, I mean, all of it, of course, is security concerns. But here is certainly a very critical element here, because this is the one that receives the, the known votes and needs to do something with it to send it off here for, for mixing, right? And then, of course, we need some admin stuff. So there's security concerns all over the place in this system, as you know. This sort of goes without saying, right? Any, from, from the top and down. Here's software engineering related concerns. We're executing JavaScript. This had better be, I mean, there's a whole ocean of security problem, problems in securely executing JavaScript. And you heard about some of these things early on. Right, uh, we need to invoke remote services. Uh, that opens a can of worms, of course. And the vote collection server here. Oh, I only have three minutes left. OK, the time passes quickly. Uh, so I'll cut myself short. Security problems all over the place, from hardware, secure processors, random number generation up to the entire software stack. So this you, you already know, of course. Um, and in the project, we are trying to address all sorts of places in a system like this and demonstrate some of them in, in a concrete demonstrator system. That's basically what, what, we, are, what we are doing. So we are working with formal verification of hardware design, risk five processors, for instance. At, at, at the lowest level we are, we, 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 we are working on, we are interested in analyzing side channels and modeling side channels. That, for instance, we had the Spectre and Meltdown disaster while doing this project, so this has influenced our work a lot. And up the, the stack, you know, we get all sorts of uh, problems here. This is a very small screen, actually. Uh, you can probably not read it at all. Um, but I just want to show some quick highlights then in my two minutes I have left. Uh, as to give some examples of things we've done in the past year or so. Like we've, uh, we've worked on diversification of JavaScript execution as a, as a technique that, uh, that helps us secure uh, well, JavaScript and uh, WebAssembly execution. We've worked, uh, done some very interesting experiments on uh, on using neural networks to generate, uh, to to fix automatically fix security vulnerabilities in C code. Very ambitious, but we have some success. We've worked on modeling. P4, P4 is a software-defined networking language, so we've worked on giving formal semantics to P4, so we can actually execute P4 programs in a predictable way. 
we've worked on various uh, enclave models and uh, and uh, and compared those. We've worked on developing the basic cryptographic security of the uh, MixNet model. We've worked on uh, on prototype pollution in uh, in JavaScript and got some very interesting uh, very interesting results in this that were published in is published in Usenix this year. We've worked on various way or ways of validating models that we use in our theorem prover of processors. There's no, you know, when we want to analyze side channels against a formal model, a basic question is, you know, is this formal model actually correct? Does that reflect the side channels we're after? So we've done some work on, so we've done some work on, uh, on testing in order to find out the answer to this question. This is actually a very interesting question and uh, highly topical. And we've got some good results on that. And we have a PhD student, Jonas Haglund, who's defending um, later this spring, who's done a very comprehensive work on analyzing USB uh, per peripherals, uh, USB and network interface controllers uh, in order to find commonalities, general archi reusable architectures for, for that, uh, that, that can be extracted from these. Actually, he looked at 24, I think, different controllers in order to extract uh, models that would be reusable uh, uh, and, and able to, to uh, yeah, be reliable, reliably used in, in a formal analysis. So, yeah. That is a snapshot of the Trustful Project. Thank you.